I've got a dilemma. I think my cat's in love with me. <laughs> now, we've been living together for six months now. And I kind of don't know how to tell him that we should just be friends. It's a... Uh, <laughs> can you friends own a cat? Is it possible? I mean... <laughs> I think in reality, more, he's just very, very high maintenance. He, he keeps on whining all the bloody time. You know, when I wake up in the morning, meow! When I don't feed him enough, meow! When I go out of the house, meow! The problem is, we start arguing like a couple. He will start going, meow! What is it? Meow! Not now, I'm tired. Meow! What? What is it? What do you want? I feed you! You get strokes on tap! You can shit anywhere in the garden! What do you want? Oh. Well, I, I agree with you. I just don't think the Israeli government will go for a two-state solution. <laughs> As it turns out, my cat's actually quite well-versed in international politics. Uh, from sort of uh, one controversial subject to another, I would like to uh, talk to you about disability. And how actually I think it actually can be quite funny. And the reason I say this is because this is actually quite close to my heart. Because I actually have a brother who has severe disabilities. Uh, he suffers from a genetic condition called pitt Hopkins Syndrome which is not to be mistaken with Hopkin Pitt Syndrome, which is just an obsession with the film Meet Joe Black. Now, uh, the best example I think I could find of how he could make disability funny is when the family went to Disneyland. And because my brother is disabled, we got given this special pass. And it's basically Disneyland's version of diplomatic immunity. It means you can do anything you want there. You can shoot Goofy and no one would care. But the most important thing, you can get to the front of lines for rides. And you could do it every bloody time. You'll be taking my brother in a wheelchair, going right to the front of Space Mountain, and you could just see the able-bodied people just gritting their teeth and going, don't say anything. Just, just stand there, just cope with it. He's in a wheelchair. If you, if you say something, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. Just don't say anything. The problem was, we kind of got drunk on power. And we started going on rides, but we didn't need to. We would spend entire days on Space Mountain because we could. Two hours in the teacup one day because no one had the balls to actually get us off. <laughs> but as it turns out, we weren't the only family at Disneyland who had a disabled child and had this special pass. So when we were coming to the front of the lines, we found ourselves playing disability top trumps with other families. <laughs> you know, getting to the, uh, the front of the Matterhorn line and you go, aha! Your son can walk. My brother's in a wheelchair. Wheelchair beats leg braces every time. Oh, he's, he's only got a couple of weeks to live. Yeah, right. <laughs> you better go to the front. Um, I'm going to end tonight with a... Uh, I'm going to ask a question. How many people you are here who are married or engaged to be married? Yeah. Okay, here's another question. How many of those who... How many of the guys proposed on Christmas Day or a special day like Valentine's Day or Christmas Day? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, well, it seems that none of you did, which is really good. You're really good people. Because over Christmas, some friends of mine actually got married on Christmas Day. So I got, got engaged on Christmas Day. And I'm happy for them. Look at my face. I'm happy for them, honestly. But to be honest, it's kind of emotional blackmail, if you think about it. Because if you say no, on Christmas Day, you have ruined Christmas for everyone. I mean, you can imagine it. You get down on one knee and you look them straight in the eye and they could be surrounded by their entire family. And you say, would you do me the honor? Would you make me the happiest man in the world? Will you marry me? And there's an awkward silence. And they just look down at you, and you look up at them, and you don't know what to say. And all they can say is, Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Andy Rowley. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>